What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. This is the second part to another video that I uploaded, so if you haven't seen that yet, click the annotation here or click the link in the video description to catch up. On the last part of catching every Kanto Pokemon in 24 hours, we started each game and made it all the way to Cinnabar Island on red, blue, and yellow. Our current total of caught Pokemon is 19 out of 151, but we have caught a bunch of Pokemon that we haven't evolved yet. With that out of the way, let's get started. Unlike the majority of the last video, Red, Blue, and Yellow are going to be heading to the Silf Company at the same time to take on some unfinished business. Although we have access to nearly every area in the game, the Silf Co. is home to a couple of things that will make our journey a lot easier. After defeating Dennis, Red talks to the scientist that just watched his team get destroyed. Scared for his life, he gives us Lapras, adding another to our total. After defeating the final grunt in the building, we can open the door with a card key and meet our good friend Giovanni. I'd like to note that the process to reach this point took roughly 6 minutes per game. Although this building contains 31 different people that you can battle, only like 2 or 3 grunts are actually mandatory to fight to reach Giovanni. I'm not sure if this was just a bad way they mapped out the floors, but either way we defeated Team Rocket once again. When we talk to the leader of Silph Co, he'll gift us a Master Ball for saving him. I think you know exactly what we're going to do with this. We talk to the old man again and fly to Cinnabar Island to do the missing note glitch. I think that my favorite thing about this glitch is the fact that when you encounter it, the cries are different so you can play Guess Who's Hiding Behind This Giant Wall of Pixels. I'm pretty sure that was Nidoran. Meanwhile, Blue is fighting Erica. By beating this gym, it will give us access to the move Strength. We're going to need this to catch some Pokemon in Victory Road, so getting it out of the way makes it a much easier time. While Red and Blue were able to have a bunch of items with the missing note glitch, Yellow has a different story. Game Freak knew about this glitch and made it so you couldn't encounter Pokemon on Shore Tiles, which is the main mechanic for making this glitch work. However, there is a way we still can do this, but it takes a little bit more effort. We're going to use the same trainer glitch that we used to obtain Mew on the Nugget Bridge. Instead of teleporting to Cerulean City, we're going to fly to Cinnabar Island. Because the Pokemon we encounter through the glitch is based on the special stat of the Pokemon we last fight, we need to find a Pokemon that has the same special stat of missing though. There is a special Pokemon that we can find in the Pokemon Mansion that'll make this possible. Unfortunately, this is going to take a while to find, so let's see how the others are doing. Blue is battling Sabrina as we're going to need all 8 badges in order to gain access to Victory Road. After this, we still have one final task to complete in Saffron, the Fighting Dojo. There are quite a few trainers in here, but thankfully we only have to fight two of them. Can someone explain to me how this man used his sixth sense to see me in the completely wrong direction? Are you sure we're not in Sabrina's gym? After defeating the Karate Master, he'll let us pick out a fighting Pokemon. For Blue, we're going to collect Hitmonchan. In Red, we're talking to the scientists in the Pokemon Revival Lab so we can revive our stolen fossils. Even though we haven't added Kabuto to our dex count, we're going to evolve this one later. While Blue is heading to the basement of the Pokemon Mansion, Yellow finally finds what we're looking for after a grueling 10 minutes of walking back and forth. A Ditto. While Ditto itself doesn't have the special stat that we need, Nidoking actually does. These Nidokings that you get through the glitch have a potential of having three different special stats that make it possible for Missing No to appear through the Trainer Flight glitch. These are also super reliable because quite a few Missing No's freeze the game when you encounter them. All we do is let Ditto transform and we're all set. Can Gold Nidoking actually be a thing because this looks insane? To keep our encounter in the data, we're going to use the escape rope and teleport back to Cerulean City. After encountering Spooky Ghost Nidoran again, we're ready to catch them all. Unfortunately, with this specific missing no glitch, you can't swap items to duplicate during the battle, so we're going to have to do this again. Yay! Red is in the Viridian Forest to catch three Weedles. Right after this, I found a Pikachu that I planned on catching later in the power plant, but this will make it a little bit more smooth. Blue grabs the secret key, so now we can go fight Blaine in the one gym worse than Lieutenant Surge's. At this point, Red has to go to Mount Moon to catch a couple Pokemon, but I totally forgot that I skipped Brock. When you land in Pewter, the guide text starts up and then nothing happens. But when you walk over where he originally was, the event triggers again even though he's not there. So I guess we'll just walk over there and... What? The only way to pass this paranormal guide is to do the Brock skip again. Well, I mean I guess I could fight Brock and not have to worry, but I'm not going to make this mistake again. I hope. It's at this point where I screw things up again. Could I have done the Brock through walls glitch and skip straight to Mount Moon like I did 4 hours ago? Of course, but instead I decided to start battling every trainer on the route. 
I'm not really sure where my head was at this point during the run, but I chose not to deal with that easy issue and fly to Fuchsia City again to deal with some more Safari Zone. In yellow, I found out if you're falling through the floor in the Pokemon Mansion, you can have a sky battle with Grimer. After that, I made the next mistake of walking directly in front of a trainer while doing the Ditto glitch. You need to let a trainer walk up to you, so I ended up freezing the game. I'll have to redo the glitch, so we'll come back in a bit. Red is currently having every Kangaskhan in existence run away on the first ball throw. Even though I had like 10 encounters run away from me during the Safari game, I was still able to catch one Execute and two Paris. In blue, we're already fighting Giovanni, which will obviously not be a problem at all. But this makes it so we can finally reach Victory Road. I realize that Missing Note is technically a Pokemon, so it would be stupid to not catch him, right? It doesn't add anything to the Pokedex counter, so I guess we'll put him right here. I am curious though what would happen if we had it in our party. Oh. Hey Pikachu. You're looking good. I, I thought we put you in the trash, not the garbage disposal. Blastoise learned strength from the Safari Warden in blue, and then we proceeded to decimate Dom again on Route 22. After crying over losing about 403 Chansey and Scyther encounters, I remember that there is a glitch that can make this a lot easier. If we use an escape rope in the Safari Zone, we can encounter Pokemon on the shore the same way that we accidentally caught Mewtwo. Because the game tracks encounters based on the last place encounters were available, all of the Pokemon for whatever zone we were in will appear. With no chance to flee, this means we can catch Scyther, Kangaskhan, our second Execute, and Chansey. Yellow was also in the Safari Zone, which leads to arguably the most annoying portion of the game, catching a Tauros. Unlike Red and Blue, you can't do the glitch to catch Pokemon outside the Safari Zone. Game Freak made it so any shore tiles, like the ones on Cinnabar Island, are unable to yield encounters. Tauros has a 10% encounter rate, which isn't terrible, but in turn it also has roughly a 10% catch rate. But obviously the Safari Zone is more than just throwing balls. We have the option to throw rocks, which does double the catch rate, but also doubles the chance for it to flee. Bait quarters its flea rate, but halves its catch rate. With all these funky calculations in mind, before I even throw a rock or bait, it has a 42% chance to run if I don't catch it on the first ball. Its catch rate is 45, which is the equivalent of catching a Dratini or Gyarados, but if we use bait three times, it would be a couple points shy of the equivalent of catching a Mewtwo at full health. This means that our best option is to just keep throwing balls until we get one. To save you the pain I had to deal with, after about 20 Tauros, we finally caught one. While we were in the Safari, I managed to grab Cubone, another Nidoran male, another Nidoran female, and Rhyhorn again. Blue reaches the end of Victory Road and is rewarded with the legendary Firebird, Moltres. Heading back to the entrance, we were able to catch Ditto, Firo, and two Sandshrew. We then went back to Nugget Bridge to catch the two remaining Abras that we couldn't catch at the beginning of the run. To continue our catching spree, we also catch two Jigglypuff on Route 3. Yellow goes to Route 1 again and catches a level 3 Rattata and a Master Ball, arguably one of the worst uses of a Master Ball next to selling it for the $0 the game thinks it's worth. The next section is a little hectic. In the beginning of the game, everyone is following the same path, but once that's all done, it's wild how closely timed a lot of these encounters are. These next events took place within the same 5 minutes on each recording. After leaving Cinnabar Island, Red went to Lavender Town to go to the Rock Tunnel. Here we caught 3 Geodude, 2 Machop, and 2 Zubat. Blue received the Good Rod from the Guru in Fuchsia City, and went to Route 11 to catch 4 Poliwag. Yellow went back to the Viridian Forest and planned to catch 3 Caterpie, but I found 2 Metapod before I even found 1 Caterpie, which brings our current total to 41 Pokemon. For our next catch, we have to go deep into Mount Moon to grab a Paris that I forgot I already had two of, so we'll take a look once I figure out that I'm an idiot. Red is also a little busy at the moment because I forgot that when a PC box is full, you have to move the box to an empty slot to catch Pokemon. So I guess we'll come back to Mankey. Blue managed to grab three Venonat, two Bellsprout, and Weeping Bell. When I realized my error in yellow, I went to Vermilion to catch two Diglett in the Diglett Cave. After switching boxes, I reclaimed the two Mankey and grabbed three Oddish while I was there. Ekans was added to the total as well as Growlithe after I snatched two of each to the right of Lavender Town, which leads us to this moment. I went back to Lavender Town to go to the Pokemon Tower. When I got into my first encounter, as you probably figured, I completely forgot about the fact that I skipped the game corner with the Pokedoll, which means that I can't catch any Pokemon here. What makes this worse is that nearly the same time after catching my third Nidoran female, I made an even worse mistake in yellow. 
I was heading back to the rock tunnel to catch Onyx, something that I had already encountered previously on both Red and Blue on my first time through it. It has a 10% encounter rate which is totally manageable, but I didn't know that the exit wasn't the lower floor, which is the only area where you can catch Onyx. The funniest part about this is that Onyx is the only different Pokemon from the two floors. So here I am, running through encounters, wondering why my luck is so bad that I'm finding everything but a giant rock snake that probably carved out this whole thing I'm in. It'd be quite a while before I figure out what's wrong. During all this, Blue goes to Celadon City to catch two Slowpoke. I had the opportunity to catch two Poliwhirl, which I overlooked, but it doesn't take a lot to level Poliwag up, so I just skipped that option. I withdrew Venonat from my PC and brought it to the Pokemon Revival Center to trade it for a Tangela. Catching it in the wild was a little out of the way for the route Blue was taking, so I figured it would have been a much easier option. While we were in the building, I revived Kabuto to bring our total to 52. In the same house we got the Bulbasaur in yellow, I evolved and traded a Poliwhirl with a man for a Jinx. This one is the same style as Tangela, where it's just a little less convenient to go out and get it. Our last trade is going to be in the Route 18 Observatory. We have to level up our Slowpoke 22 levels to get a Slowbro, just so we can trade it for a very unsettling sprite of Lickitung. This is the only location where you can get one in the games, aside from the Cerulean Cave in yellow, so it's a worthwhile trade. After struggling for so long, I went to the other floor in the Rock Tunnel and caught myself an Onyx. The amount of joy that I had over seeing a virtual pile of boulders was quite a bit more than the average gamer, but if you were doing this for 25 minutes, you'd probably feel the same way. After defeating the Mafia through what seemed to be time travel, we head to Lavender Town to catch ourselves 3 Ghastly and 2 Cubone. Blue still on Cinnabar Island and lands 2 Horsey, and Yellow adds 2 Goldeen to the total. We pay another visit to the Fighting Dojo in Saffron and grab the other fighting Pokemon, Hitmonlee. On our way to the Pokemon Mansion, I had planned to catch Eradicate, but I found a level 37 Rattata which works just as well. Blue is also in the Mansion to catch 3 Pokemon. First one is 2 Grimer, second is 2 Ponyta, and the third is the most painful of them all, Magmar. See, I was readily prepared to tell you about how stupid Magmar is to find. I was gonna say that how it only has a 4% chance to be found on the bottom floor only in Pokemon Blue. I was also going to tell you that I spent a considerable amount of time down there trying to find it. The only problem with all that logic is that if I went up one floor, the chance to encounter Magmar goes from 4 to 10%. So I'm just an idiot again. I will say though that the chance to even get an encounter in the Pokemon Mansion basement is stupid low, and I don't have any ability to speed it up at all. No bike, no repel trick, nothing. Until I found out about how hard I made it for myself, which is, like, right now, I would have put it as one of the most irritating things I've ever had to do in a Pokemon game. But since I wasted over 30 minutes trying to catch a Pokemon I could have caught in probably less than 5, I'll just add it to the decks and move on from here. During that whole experience, I did however manage to find a Muck, which will make things a lot easier. Red had a much easier time in the mansion and caught two coughing. In yellow, we're all the way in the Seafoam Islands, and it'll be super easy to go through because I know all the patterns for the boulders, and you've gotta be kidding me. In red, we go and talk to the girl in Vermilion City, and trade one of our Spiro for a Farfetch. After angrily beating Erica's stupid plants, we head over to the Seafoam Islands and take on the other bird that's not Zapdos, Articuno. While we're here, we'll fish up two Staryu, Krabby, and Seal. I got really lucky and found Dugong while I was pushing boulders, and found both Golbat, and Kingler, which saves a lot of rare candies for other Pokemon we need to evolve. In red, we evolved Geodude to Graveler, and evolved Ghastly to Haunter, and in blue, we evolved Abra to Kadabra. I took both games and traded them to get Alakazam and Golem. This brings our total to 74 Pokemon. We do one more trade to get Haunter to evolve to Gengar. In red, we head to the game corner to grab a few prize Pokemon. Playing the slot machines are too time consuming and illegal for a 10 year old, but fortunately we can just buy the coins. We're gonna need a lot, so let's take a look at another game. Yellow catches two Tentacool to the right of Cinnabar Island, and then catches two Psyduck above Vermilion City. To finish up our catches for Yellow, we fly to Celadon to take the bike path where we catch two Doduo, and then grab two Shelter on the route below. After spamming A for literally 15 minutes straight, we can claim our prizes of three Jatini and two Clefairy. In blue we need more coins than red did, so it took a little over 20 minutes to gather all the 9,000 coins that we needed. All we have to do is grab Pinsir and Porygon- uh... <laughs> And Porygon to complete the game corner. In red we go to our last stop, the power plant. 
Here we catch two Voltorb. <sighs> two Voltorb, Magnemite, Magneton, another Pikachu because I forgot I had one, Electabuzz, and the greatest bird of them all, Zapdos. Before we start evolving Pokemon, I trade a Clefairy for Mr. Mime and a house below Pewter City. I then trade him a Choke in the Underground Path that evolves into Machamp. Now for the finale. In Pokemon Red, we evolve our additional catches to Kakuna, Beedrill, Arbok, Raichu, Clefable, Gloom, Vileplume, Parasect, Primeape, Arcanine, Machoke, Graveler, Haunter, Electrode, Exeggutor, Marowak, Weezing, Flareon, Omastar, Kabutops, Dragonair, and Dragonite. This brings our dex total to 112 Pokemon. In Pokemon Blue, we evolve our additional catches to Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, Sandslash, Ninetales, Wigglytuff, Venomoth, Persian, Poliwhirl, Poliwrath, Kadabra, Weepin' Bell, Victory Bell, Rapidash, Slowbro, Hypno, Seedra, Gyarados, and Vaporeon. This brings our total to 130 Pokemon. And in Pokemon Yellow, we evolve to get Ivysaur, Charizard, Wartortle, Butterfree, Raticate, Nidorina, Nidoqueen, Nidorino, Dugtrio, Golduck, Tentacruel, Dodrio, Cloyster, Rhydon, Seeking, Starmie, and Jolteon. This brings your total to 146 Pokemon. So where are the other 5 Pokemon, John? Well, if you haven't been keeping track, we're missing Bulbasaur, Charmander, Charmeleon, Squirtle, and Eevee. But since we've already got all of those Pokemon in the games, we're going to have to get a second yellow save started to get Bulbasaur, Charmeleon, and Eevee. To finish it all off, we're going to do another save of blue to get Squirtle, and finally another save of red to get our final Pokemon. The one we all know and love, Charmander. And with that, we've successfully caught every Pokemon in red, blue, and yellow. But obviously we still need to trade them all to complete the Pokedex. This part really wasn't as bad as you'd think it would be. I figured that trading to have every Pokemon to one save file would have been pretty extreme, so I just went for the full registered Dax in Pokemon Red. Each trade takes about a minute, but with swapping out Pokemon in the PC and connection times, it took about 2 hours. I did this portion the day after the challenge because I didn't count it as a requirement for the challenge. But now we can go to Professor Oak and receive our grand prize. A certificate? That's it? Well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. But after all this, the question still stands. Do we complete the challenge? In Red Round 1, our time came to 7 hours and 33 minutes. On our second save, it only took 15 minutes to get Charmander. In Blue, we finished with 7 minutes flat. And we ended the second save with the same time of 15 minutes. Yellow blew both of them back with a time of 4 hours and 41 minutes, and a second save time of 1 hour and 30 minutes to reach Eevee. This will bring Yellow's total time to 6 hours and 11 minutes. With all this put together, it took a total of 26 hours and 6 minutes of in-game time to complete this. But I'd said that I wanted to complete this in under 24 hours, right? If we add up all of my recording times, it took a total of 22 hours, 28 minutes, and 8 seconds. The biggest difference between these two numbers is the fact that I did have to reset when I lost some battles. Obviously when this happens your IGT doesn't change, but with that in mind we have successfully completed our goal. This is not only a pretty tough challenge, but also a really fun one. Like I said in the first video, this time can be easily reduced. If you took away all the big mistakes I made, you could probably get an IGT of under 17 or 18 hours. I honestly could be way off, but I'm not going to test it to find it out. I'd like to see if I can continue this challenge of future generations, but I'm curious to see if you guys have any rules that you would like me to implement to make it easier or harder for me. If that's something you'd like to see, leave a comment below with your suggestion. As for that, that's going to be the end of the video. This took more time to record and edit than any video I've ever worked on, so if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe as I'll be planning on making more videos like this. If you have any suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.